Hey guys, what's going on? Sadiq, welcome to Experiences with Sadiq. Season two, Experiences with Sadiq is about all things real estate. A show where communication is key, everything for the people is bliss, and knowledge, it's inspiring. Thank you for watching, enjoy the show, and oh yeah, don't forget to follow me on all my social media platforms. Whether you're buying or selling the home, I'm that guy. Let's go! What's going on guys, your man Sadiq. Welcome to Experiences with Sadiq. So today we're gonna to have the opportunity to talk to a loan officer uh, from Precision Mortgage, right? Oh, home lending. Home lending, sorry about that. Um, we're gonna kind of take a, a, a slightly of a different twist today. Um, and the reason being is because a lot of clients of mine, um, they tend to ha ask a lot of questions in regards to the loan process and what's going on behind closed doors and stuff like that because it tends to be like it tends to be that a lot of clients don't get a lot of the information that they really need so today i definitely need to invite somebody who's been in the game for a while um the guy knows what he's talking about what's going on he knows the whole shenanigan so we're going to really get in and pop him but before we even do man has to introduce himself let's go Hey everybody, David Delbonis here, President and CEO of Precision Home Lending. Uh, I'm a 25 year veteran. I'm also in the mortgage industry. I'm also a military veteran and very uh, much an expert on VA loans. And uh, yeah, with all that time in the game, Sadiq, for sure, you definitely learn along the way what mistakes not to make. But that's how we can better serve our customers. And we're going to talk a couple of uh, ways on how to do that today, uh, and I'll, I'll turn it back over to Sadiq. No, nah, definitely. So there's been a lot of issues with clientele, clients that I deal with, deal with personally, and uh, they ask a lot of questions in regards to um, different scenarios in regards to their loans, right? Understanding their DTI, why they're not getting enough information, why their pre-approval amount is less or why am I not having the proper communication with the loan officer and stuff like that. If you don't mind, let's take it one step at a time, right? Through the process of the mortgage aspect and why, why a lot of people don't understand what's going on in the back end and why they're getting so frustrated with it. Sure, so the biggest uh, thing that frustrates customers with more in the mortgage industry mm -hmm. when they hear the word mortgage is paperwork, right? Yeah. Everybody's busy. Nobody wants to gather the paperwork. However, that's a crucial part of the process. If we don't have the right paperwork, we can't qualify or pre-qualify the customer like one of our recent customers that we're working on together. And if you don't have the right information, you're sending that customer out in the field with you as their agent, uh, not really knowing what they can afford, number one, not knowing if they actually qualify or not. We do it differently here at Precision Home Lending. We make sure the customer is completely vetted, not only for themselves so that they're comfortable and they know what they're getting into in regards to their mortgage payment, but that you know as their realtor, as you're on the front line, if the max of what they qualify is 350, you're not gonna be showing them houses for 450. Correct. And you know each different loan that a customer goes for, uh, whether it's a VA loan, an FHA loan or a conventional loan, they all have particular requirements. Oh. And we make sure that those every customer meets every one of those requirements before we send them out in the field themselves and with you as their uh, agent on the front line. Now you mentioned the word vetted, all right? Some people don't understand what that means um, on the back end of things. Sure. When, you go, when you're breaking down the consumer's uh, paperwork or whatever the case may be. If you don't mind, if you could break down what it what the vetting process sure looks like let's take one of the most important parts of the process that most people in this industry miss mm -hmm. let's say a customer is looking to buy a multi-family fha home it's required for them to have six months mortgage payments in the bank non-gifted what does that mean in english you need to have six months mortgage payments already socked away that wasn't gifted to you in the bank and you now have to come up with three and a half percent to cover the minimum statutory investment with FHA, right? So it's six months mortgage payments, three and a half percent of the purchase price, right? And now you have to get funds to close unless you're able to get them a seller concession on the on the real estate 
uh, side. Mm. So a lot of people miss that, and the customer is excited. They want to buy a multifamily, but they don't have $25,000 stocked away yep. to cover their six months reserve. Six months reserves and their 3.5%. Now, with more, with most consumers that's out there, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times they don't realize what's needed till after they start receive till after they stop the loan officer starts communi communicating certain things with them um, later on, either in the middle or later on down the line, which affects their closing transaction, right? Completely. Now, why do you why do you think we um, mo that occurs with a lot of consumers. Well, I, I think that is frustrating. We really think about it. It's frustrating for everybody because yeah. you think the customer's all set. The customer thinks they're all set. Yep. Now they're out in the field going to look at a house and they're not all set. Yeah. Uh, we don't do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, I think the reason why that happens is because you're so much in a rush to get them to see a house because mm -hmm. you don't want it to get off the market mm -hmm. and you want to get in there and make the offer and run. And your buyer's anxious to make their offer that uh, pre-approval is literally rubber stamped and given to you and to the customer and that's not the right way to do it. Yeah. Another part of the process getting back to your first question is um, debt to income ratio. <clears throat> we make sure the credit's pulled on every customer before we issue a pre-approval and we review it and that's part of the vetting like I mentioned, right? If the customer has $90,000 in student loans and it says zero next to all their payments, mm -hmm. could that affect their debt to income ratio to qualify? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we make sure we get the notes on every one of those student loans <clears throat> so that we know that once the loans are out of deferment, we know that we're calculating their debt to income ratio right on the money before you even look at one house. And at that point, it, it can be determined whether or not they need to have mom or dad co-sign or maybe they need to just lower their expectations with you on what they want to purchase. Now, the debt, the debt, the debt to income mm -hmm. ratio, is that something that's done beforehand or? Is always that, before. Or, always Everything's before. done before. All right, now All how, how's that typically calculated? So what happens is you have two functions on a debt to income ratio. Mm -hmm. uh, an underwriter would tell you front and back end. What does that mean in English? It's simple. Front end is your mortgage payment, principal, interest, taxes, insurance or what we like to re uh, refer to as pity. All right. The back end is your total debt to income ratio. So now we take the mortgage payment, your PITI front end, and then everything that's on credit, right? Mm -hmm. Stuff that's on credit that doesn't apply, it doesn't get added to the customer's debt to income ratio, uh, i.e. electrical, um, heat, et cetera, et cetera. It's like overhead expense. Correct. So yeah. now we take all their bills, their student loans, their credit cards, their car payments, everything. Mm -hmm. And all those monthly payments get added into one number, and then we divide it into their gross monthly income. Now, do you typically take that number based off their income? Do you take a percentage saying, all right, a yep. percentage of this from their income will go towards the back end of the back end of the DTI mm -hmm. and a percentage of this goes towards the front end of the DTI. Yep. What does that what does that percentage look like the, in case anybody wants to be able to calculate their own DTI? So I'll give you the percentages <laughs> and I want the consumers to know that. Happy to help. But you need to trust the mortgage professional yeah. to do it for you because we don't want you making a mistake. That's what we're here for. Um, but to answer your question, uh, front end on a conventional loan is 46 max. Right. Again, this is off somebody's gross income, 50 on the back end. All right. F FHA, 46 front, 56 back. Interesting. Now, as we're going to start turning, uh, turning a little bit, with some people that are FHA, mm -hmm. all right, a lot of times they have issues in regards to um, moving forward and trying to close on the deal because maybe they need to switch over to a conventional situation, right? Happens all the time. Happens all the time. And I recall a bunch of times where some of my clients had to kind of like take that turn, per se. Now, why does that have to come into play with when it comes to situations like that with most consumers? I know every situation is different. Of but course. The biggest reason that the consumer doesn't understand why that happens is because a conventional loan by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac is guaranteed and an FHA loan is insured. 
That's why on an FHA insured loan, the consumer pays PMI. Whereas on a conventional loan, if they're putting 20% down, that doesn't come into play. Obviously, if they go over 80% loan to value, mm -hmm. they pay. Yeah. Why does that happen from a property standpoint? FHA has a very specific code that they go by. If there are, as a broken window, peeling paint, missing doorknobs, missing doors, believe it or not, I've seen mm -hmm. it all. Um, FHA won't allow it. Yeah. Uh, septic system. Uh, conventional loans will allow this. Mm. If the customer has an old-fashioned septic system, right, a cesspool, no. right, it's not common, but it, ha no. it happens. We just closed one for this. If they have three things, they can get around not replacing that, and sometimes that's uh, a big deal for you and the other realtor because that's your negotiating power mm -hmm. of getting the deal done, yeah. right? And the three things in that scenario would be a letter of intent from the buyer no. that they're gonna replace it, an invoice on how much the replacement costs, yeah. and then um, number three is uh, an inspection that it's in working order, mm -hmm. and and that's it. No, it's crazy because most 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 clients they typically get pissed off when they have to go towards the conventional route because one <laughs> one they don't have the the funds sure right to go towards a conventional loan sure so they get into this. Uh, there's a reason why I'm doing that for check because one, I see the three and a half percent down, or I'm borrowing money from without housing, whatever the case may be, and they don't understand the gist of that, you know. Sure. And sometimes going conventional might be the best route for them. And in most cases, for someone who's going to be upset about a situation about why they have to go through FHA uh, from FHA to conventional. I don't know how you feel about this, but I would recommend, as a safety net, have some funds put aside Always. just in case there's, there might be an alternative. 100%. The, 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 the conversation that you just had is the same conversation I have with every single customer mm -hmm. and how I train every single loan officer that works for me. Have the contingency plan in place. Mm -hmm. If you're unable to get this down payment assistance program, if you're unable to get into this house with 3% and you have to put 5 or 10% down, do you have someone that is uh, in a financial position to give you the money? And you have that conversation day one. Yeah. Because if that does happen, and the majority of times that happens, Sadiq, it's generally property related. Yeah. It's not really the borrower. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, that's a good point. But sometimes it is the, the, the borrower because maybe their income was a little wonky between commission and bonus yeah. and they started a new job and... The list goes on. Mm -hmm. Oh, they work for a temp agency like the other one we talked about. Yeah, yeah. The list goes on. Yeah. Um, having that conversation up front day one, mm -hmm. to me, is crucial. Yeah. Because if you have to revisit it, now you know. We actually take it a step fur further. What's that? What we do is, after we have the contingency conversation about, do you have someone in the family that's in a financial position to give you 10, 15, whatever thousand dollars, mm -hmm. we ask who? And then we verify the assets with that person. Interesting. Now, with that, with that being said, right? Mm -hmm. With the with the consumers and, and and the way they're looking at certain situations, they feel like most consumers feel like that communication lacks amongst loan officer to them, right? Mm -hmm. There's a disconnect they feel as if, right? Especially when you have the so-called main loan officer who has maybe a potential assistant or whatever the case may be underneath them, but they don't realize that, yes, the main loan officer is doing the work that needs to get done to help them out while the assistant is trying to, I don't want to say infiltrate, I don't think that's the correct word, but I guess infiltrate in terms of trying to help you and the buyer and try and make sure they play that middle person to make sure that the buyer has everything that they need to make sure that your work is done as effective as possible. 100%. So most consumers don't understand that. They feel like, why can't, their, their main thing is, why can't I get a hold of the loan officer that's working my deal? I need to speak to that person. I want to speak to the assistant. I couldn't agree with you more. You that, know. <laughs> that's, that's why we don't do that here. Uh -huh. Every loan officer works independently. Yeah. I do have a support staff, but their job is to get the loan through the underwriting process and through the closing process. Mm -hmm. 
between myself, my operations manager, Dario, okay, uh, we worked alone through the entire process. Um, and how we do that is by staying in constant communication with uh, the consumer directly. So there's one of two to three people that they can get on the phone at all times. Mm -hmm. And our speed to market is generally an hour or less. I like it to be 30 minutes or less, but my staff tells me I'm too aggressive. <laughs> um, but there's nothing wrong with that. Nah, you gotta have You're just to, on top. You're on you top gotta, of your game. You gotta be on top of your games. Uh, the, the issue with what you just mentioned and why most high producing loan officers do that, it's because they're busy. I get it. 100%. I get it. I completely understand. There's only so many hours in the day. We all have families. We have houses. We have kids. We have broken garage doors like I woke up <laughs> this morning. It happens, man, right? It does. You just does. deal with it. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I don't agree with that business model. That's why I don't run my business that way. That's why my loan officers deal directly with their customers and their realtors. Yeah. And everyone knows if they can't reach their loan officer, you know who they call. They call me. And if I see a pattern, that person doesn't work, that pat that person doesn't work here mm -hmm. uh, anymore because I won't allow it. Yeah. I want the customer first and foremost to be in the front of the room at all times. And I want you as the realtor and the other agent, yeah. um, whether you have a good working relationship or not. Mm -hmm. They're part of the transaction. They yeah. need to know what's going on. You know what the biggest compliment I can get from a realtor on either so, side is at the what, end of the process on a purchase? What is that? I don't think I talked to you once. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? That means before they even thought about getting an update, they were getting updated. Yeah. And, if, and if, you, if anyone watching the podcast goes on to Zillow, you can check out my reviews and you can see that. We work really hard to accomplish that with every customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, I'm doing my first, actually I'm working on a con uh, transaction with you right now. And you know, we just recently met and the way you come, the way you came across was pretty much, listen, this is what it is. You know, this is what I'm about, this is how I move. I'm pretty efficient, I'm on top of my shit. Excuse, pardon the language, but it is what it is. Um, but it's like, and that's very important, right? Because when you're going through this transaction, there's a lot of emotions that's going on, especially between the parties on the buy side, the realtor, the loan officer, right? And a lot of that, emo we also play therapists. And I, I think I've mentioned this a bunch of times in, in my other podcast. Because the client can go from low to high at any given moment, and just being able to try to help them navigate that channel of getting them to that finish line. So I totally get it, but most other realtors, loan officers, they don't get it, you know. So, and I explain. I understand that you explain how you operate in a standpoint in, 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 in regards to position, but on a deeper scale, right? How do you navigate a scenario where you need to take a client from a low point to a high point and just assure them that things are going to be okay? With patience. Hmm. And I'm blessed with 20-year-old uh, twins. Uh, proud being a dad. It's mm -hmm. definitely taught me a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. Uh, as we get older, we get a little bit more patient and sometimes maybe a little not. Yep. A little more gray hair. Luckily, I don't have any. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're good, man. You still got some hair. Um, but patience and be willing to understand and take the time to listen to the customer wherever it takes. And yes, we are like therapists. I've never lost sight in 25 years that buying a house is probably the, the most emotional thing that you can do next to having a child. And if the customer needs a half an hour, and they need to vent about a recent dilemma in their life, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be there to listen. Nice. It's the right thing to do. It is, and, and I've, I've been in those situations a, bu a bunch of times. It's not- I'm sure. <laughs> trust me, it's not, and, and the reason being is because a lot of time we might be going through, a, we are going through a process, process of helping the person buy a home, right? But on the back end of things, that person is dealing with a lot of different emotions, right? And a lot of time, it can be from the standpoint of them not understanding their mortgage, how their loan process works, stuff of things of that nature. And before I even go on, as a realtor, right, and I think you're big on this, and if I'm correct, I think you mentioned this. As a realtor, 
do you think that makes sense for realtors to know things regarding the mortgage aspect to educate their client? Or do you think that the realtor should actually reach out to the loan officer and, dis and find out whatever answer that they need to find out? The realtor should know almost as much as the loan officer, Interesting, in my opinion. And that's what we take a lot of pride in doing is working and coaching with our realtor partners mm -hmm. so that you do understand the process because at the end of the day, if you are ha having a higher level conversation with your customer mm -hmm. because you understand how to explain debt to income ratio, mm -hmm. oh, you have student loans, okay, we're gonna need the notes on them, you know, David's gonna ask you for mm -hmm. those. You're gonna be talking at a higher level. You look mm -hmm. different than every other realtor, so mm -hmm. we're making you shine more mm -hmm. and we're shining more at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I totally, totally, 100% uh, agree, um, and that's why we have training programs with multiple mm -hmm. brokerages around the state where we go in every six weeks and we train a particular topic, mm -hmm. uh, in including self-defense. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, we have one of our loan officers here, Sasha. He, he's mm -hmm. going to talk about that with you in a minute. All right. He actually is a uh, 25-year veteran in martial arts. Yeah. So how, uh, how does that tie into? It ties into everything. It's the relationship, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, the more we can offer to the brokerage and to the individual realtor, they know that we're putting our best foot forward, whether it's educating them on how a mortgage works, mm -hmm. helping them protect themselves when they're out in the field. Interesting. Uh, everything. We want the complete relationship, and we want the brokerage and the individual realtor to know that we're here. Mm -hmm. We have the experience. We're here to answer your questions. Mm -hmm. We're here to answer your customers' questions. Mm -hmm. uh, all of it. So who plays this? Who plays self-defense? The realtor or the consumer? No, I'd love, I'd, I'd, I'd love to have Sasha jump in and talk to you about that. <laughs> Sasha, you got a second? Yeah, I you, do. Sasha's going to come in real quick. We'll be right back in one minute because we're going to need to understand how the self-defense aspect and uh, the mortgage, on the mortgage side of things work. Give us one second. So we came right back and uh, we're going to be talking about self-defense from the mortgage side of things. And, uh, the, and the perfect person walked in who works alongside David. Uh, his name is Sasha. He's going to break it down to you guys how self-defense works on the mortgage side of things. And I'm actually happy that we're having this discussion because this, is, this actually puts a twist in... Uh, from a realtor standpoint as well as going, it should put a twist from a consumer standpoint as well. So if you don't mind, Sasha, break it down. Into, I, I, obviously, I've already introduced him, but he's going to introduce himself again. And then we're going to get into the discussion of how that self-defense on the mortgage side of things operate. Go All right, ahead. yeah, so my name is Sasha. Uh, I'm with, uh, obviously, Precision Home Lending. Mm -hmm. um, an added bonus of me joining the team, I have a dual life. I'm also a martial arts self-defense expert, mm -hmm. so. Um, Watch out now, he's gonna <laughs> kick your ass, man. <laughs> but with a bit of a twist, I'm, uh, I, 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 I moved to Rhode Island, I brought this with me uh, from Canada. Um, and uh, ironically, within the last couple years, you know, obviously we've been through a lot, you yeah. know um also i've noticed trends of where you know there sometimes there people have sort of switched you know mm -hmm. uh there i mean i just even did a, a session uh two months ago with a property management group because they went to go collect money and people were packing weapons on them and oh. being aggressive and they felt uneasy they're like you know we've never been confronted in a situation like this mm -hmm. and my especially the female uh, were, uh um, the, the females that were going out to these places they were just feeling very nervous mm -hmm. Uh, so they were looking for something to help teach their uh, their employees just mm -hmm. to feel a bit more confident and have some tools. Yeah. Um, so we did a session and they loved it. And uh, so, you know, what it is, scheduling is hard. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes self-defense, people think it's a trick that you learn. Um, but what I teach is really what's unique to the system, which you might see here. It's breathe, move, fight. It's all based on principles. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea is, is that I teach you how to problem solve. Um, so when and, and it actually can easily translate into your day-to-day -day life because you know you have battles day to day, yeah. negotiating people that are even like you know you're waiting in a line and there's mm -hmm. just people that are antsy and just frustrated. 
Um, and how do you check yourself and see how can I stay calm in the storm? Um, and like today, I just did a, a session with, uh, with a group and the, the lady just today, she had an incident this weekend. She went to go show a house and she went in and the guy comes in and she said all of a sudden her creep factor went up a bit because he said, oh, I just waited till everybody left so I want to come in. So she's by herself. And he kept on asking to go look up at the, at the, at the master bedroom upstairs. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, you can go look. Mm -hmm. But she's, I just felt uncomfortable. Yeah. And she goes, my instincts were to go outside, uh, went on the phone, pretended I was talking to a client, said, yeah, yeah, you can be here. That's yeah, five minutes away. Mm -hmm. uh, but she said, I was nervous. Yeah. You know, I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. and I go, well, that's why we're here. Yeah. You know, so um, I think there's a lot of elements where, you know, especially for a realtor that... Um, um, that just have some confidence and security, mm -hmm. you know, outside of knowing your mortgages, yeah. you know, um, but even just to be out in an open house mm -hmm. and you have strangers walking all the time, yeah. you know, you never know, yeah. you know. Um, so that's it sort of in a nutshell in terms yeah. of what, uh, why I do it. Uh, to get into the nitty gritty of what it is, yeah. um, I can do that too. It's up to you. No, nah, no, nah, definitely. And, and because that's going to be the important factor, right? So if you don't mind, what does that nitty gritty look like okay for both the consumer as well as the realtor or loan officers so the nitty gritty meaning that like well for the for at least for the agents for now i mean because obviously i teach consumers to even the regular civilian yeah. so they can you know they can learn it on their own on, on, on that aspect but with the agents i think it's just Having the confidence though too, um, and again with the current environment, is having an extra tool in your toolbox. You know, everybody has something unique and identifiable with them, but again, you know, you can have a guy with a hammer, he goes on a construction site, he might fix a couple of things, but what happens when he needs a screwdriver, right? If he doesn't have one, well, you know? So self-defense is sort of that screwdriver or another tool as, you're, as an agent that when you go out in the field, you know, you, 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 have, you have a lot of resources on, on hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I do have to say, I do notice it more with the females, mm. um, especially women. Um, they seem to be, which I totally understandable as you know, as guys, we rough house, yeah. we do, you know what I mean? We're yeah. sort of used to that. Yeah. Women aren't, yeah. you know, we might not understand that, right? Because we're used to being like that. But with a woman, she might say, like, I feel very insecure, though. I don't yeah. feel good. They might not vocalize it, but they do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes and when I do these programs, like, oh, thank God you have a thing like this. You know, I was always sort of thinking this, but I didn't know where to go, what yeah. to do. I thought I'd take karate or I'd take something else. Yeah. But in essence, those are not self-defense. Those are martial arts. And that's another myth is that people think martial arts is self-defense. Yeah. It isn't. Yeah. I've been doing this long enough, and, I, and just to give you a lowdown, most of the people I train with, like I said, it's a Russian martial art, but it was designed for special forces. Yeah. Everybody in the world is in an international system where the people that know it and they know how it works, it's, it's basically, you don't have scripted moves, mm -hmm. you don't have these dramatic yeah. techniques. I teach you how to create an intelligent body and an intuitive body, and you can weaponize your whole body, mm -hmm. and you create the best move that you can mm -hmm. at that moment, at that time. What does that intelligent body and uh, that intuitive body look like? Like right now, mm -hmm. first principle, closest weapon to closest target. Your closest tar weapon is right there is your foot, mm -hmm. because my closest target is right there. If I were to step up, mm -hmm. bam, smack me in the knee, it'll mm -hmm. drop me back, mm -hmm. right? You don't need a fighting stance. But you have self-awareness, you have proprioceptive awareness, knowing where you are in space and what weapons you have accessible to yourself. Interesting. Right? Because I would never guess, the average person will never guess that that could be a weapon right there. Yeah. Vice versa for me, yeah. mind is my knee, my foot right yeah. there. Disrupt you from there. You just hurt me, by the way. So. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> but a simple tactic like yeah. that, you know what I mean? I don't need brute, brute force. No. There's other elements. I'll teach yeah. you how to be a pain teacher because mm -hmm. people respond to pain very quickly, too, right? Yep. But that's down the road. And those mm -hmm. are professionals when they have to use that in a mm -hmm. different form. And it's also not in a violent way. Yeah. In one way, we're very compassionate because I'm not looking to destroy you. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking you to stop you from doing what you were doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whatever it is, you're aggressive, you're angry, you're mad. I shouldn't personalize it. I need to get the job done to survive, go back to my family, go back to my kids, mm -hmm. and sell another home. So this self-defense is more so utilized for realtors, mm -hmm. loan officers. Can I say predominantly women? So this pro what I've done is the system is adaptable to every and, environment. Yep. So what I teach, though, is specifically for realtors, though. All right. Um, I have designed it because they're in a unique situation exactly. where they're in a house. Yeah. So there's a lot to go on in a house mm -hmm. and helping them create like an exit strategy mm -hmm. in case you need one. Yeah. Right. 
uh, the old adage is I'd rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war, mm. right? So I'd rather know that I have the capabilities and if mm. I need to, I know what to execute. Yeah. And like everything else, systems in play will help you, mm -hmm. right? Having your systems, like even in obviously in sales, your CRM, yeah. all the stuff that help you get your leads and contact yeah. and all that stuff. Well, same thing when I go to an open house, I have a system in play, yeah. right? I even have my worst case scenario. What do I do? Mm -hmm. What is my exit plan? Mm -hmm. you know, where do I park my car? Where should I go? Do I know my house? Do I know that there's a back door there? There's a back door, which you will know because obviously you're showing the house, you know yeah. the details. Yeah, yeah. But not to be neurotic, but you know these are opportunities that if all goes to wherever, yeah. then I know this is where I go out. Yeah. You know, and that's it. No, that's, that's, that's actually pretty crazy because a lot, especially um, the last few years, it seems like a lot of women realtors have been getting attacked oh, totally. from, from a lot of the articles that I've been reading. And they're getting concealed carries. Yeah, and it, it's, 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 and it's just crazy. And like, I'm at, and you're the first person who I ever met who teaches self-defense for someone to protect themselves, mm -hmm. whether it's using their mental or their physical, whatever the case may be. And I think, you know, moving forward, a lot more of that, this type of tool should be implemented, right? Um, especially when we go into vacant properties or, you know, when you're the last agent there and you have, the, like you said, you have that, the, the, female, the lady agent who was there by herself and the guy was just waiting until everybody's there. Right. Situation like that is very scary. It's very spooky, and like I think it's very dope to know that Sasha, that you're teaching something like that that's going to benefit um, the, the the average realtor or the everyday right. realtor. Um, even even the loan officers themselves, because a lot sometimes a lot of these loan officers do open houses. They partner up with other realtors. To be to 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 run the open house. Get me there. And, <laughs> and that's facts, right? right. <laughs> As a bodyguard. Um, that's what I, absolutely. <laughs> but it's it's really dope, and I definitely appreciate you for that. And I think that's amazing. Um, you guys know what it is. It's your man Sadiq on experiences with Sadiq. If you guys like what you guys see, please follow all my social media platforms, whether it's Sadiq Davies, which is my personal brand page, or my team, the Davies Group, or Experiences with Sadiq. If you like what you see, you can also please follow, like, subscribe on my YouTube channel as well. Until next time, love, peace, happiness. Let's go. <laughs> I didn't know that.